All right, here's an interesting one for you then. Correcting dogs, punishment and correction, administering discipline, um, enforcing uh, commands, enforcing rules, enforcing boundaries. What does it mean? How do I do it? When do I do it? How do I know it's going to work? How do I know I'm going to cock things up and it's going to go wrong? Okay, there's so much involved in this, but I'm just going to I'm going to put basically a few thoughts down here, a few points down here to hopefully get some sort of a, a discussion amongst people or to get people thinking. The first thing, the, the vast majority of people, the most on most occasions, people will correct a dog. There's there's generally two things. Either that you've asked the dog to do something, or you're commanding something, or you're cueing if you want, but you are giving a command to the dog and it's failing to do it. So you're correcting the dog for that, all right? So you're correcting the dog for doing something other than the thing that you're telling them to do. So I might be telling you to heal while you're dragging me over here, so I give you a yank back, heal, you know, I give you whatever it is, you know, that, that sort of um, way of dealing with things. And the other thing is that the dog does something I don't want them to do. So I'm not actually asking them to do something. They've just done something. So they've jumped up and nicked food off the side or they've legged it out into the garden with an iPhone or there's something that they've done that I'm not happy with. Um, and I'm going to look, first of all, I'm going to look at the second one, the second one that we just mentioned there. So the dog does something that I don't want them to do. Now, there can be different reasons why I don't want them to do it. They can be because it is something that is harmful to the dog it's something that um, threatens their welfare, threatens the welfare of somebody else or some other animal. Um, it can be something that threatens damage to property, belonging to myself or to somebody else. Or it can be something that I consider to be an annoyance, um, amongst other things. But they're basically, none of those things have got anything to do with an actual behaviour that I'm asking of the dog. They're just something that the dog is doing that carries um, aspects of it that I consider to be dangerous, welfare compromising, um, or annoying, just plain old, old annoying. Now for this one, if I'm going to correct a dog uh, for these behaviours, then that correction needs to carry certain aspects okay, to, for it to be successful. And these are the timing of it, to start with. It needs to be delivered at exactly the right time. The correction needs to be delivered at exactly the right time in order to reduce the likelihood, to reduce the strength, the frequency of what caused it, of what the dog was doing when that happened. So the timing needs to be spot on. If I, my dog does something, I don't know, um, shreds up a piece of wallpaper on the corner of a wall and I come into the room two minutes later, see that the dog's done it and go over and give the dog a telling off, it hasn't got a hope in hell of understanding what's going on there. It's a complete and utter waste of time. So the timing has to be right. If when I was chewing the wallpaper, whoa, something happened or oh my goodness, what happened, the wallpaper just did something, then that's different because the timing there is right and it is immediately associated with what I was doing. Okay, so the timing. The second thing is the method, how I'm doing it, what it is that I'm doing. What do I want the dog to associate with the negative outcome? Do I want it to be me? Do I want it to be, if you would take that example, the wallpaper? Do I want it to be the room? Do, do I want it to be being led into the room? Do I want it to be associated with a command that follow, you know, that immediately precedes the correction? What do I want? What do I want the dog to understand? The intensity of the correction. How hard should it be? How, how firm should it be? You know, should it be painful? Should it be uh, commanding? Um, you know, what, what should, should it be distasteful? Should it be startling? Should it, what should it be? How do I do it? What am I looking to achieve? How much do I want to get from you? You know, how, what sort of a, a level of um, conditioning do I want from you? What do I want you to think about what just happened, about the behaviour that you did and the consequence that followed? Or don't I want you to think? Do I just want you to think, bloody hell, and sort of scatter away from there? You know, I need to look at the intensity of what I'm going to do or how I'm going to deliver that consequence. The other thing is, do I want that to be associated with me? Do I want to be involved in that correction at all? Do I want the dog to think that I was the one who administered that correction? I was the one who basically, through the use of my voice or through a command that I was given or you know, a posture that I was adopting or something like that, do I want that to be associated with a negative consequence that occurred as a result of you doing that thing? Okay, the, the, the correction also needs to finish. It needs to end once the behavior has ended. 
So if you look at something like a, a citronella spray, for example, so the dog does a certain thing, a blast of citronella comes off, excuse me, two, two days later, that dog still smells of citronella. Probably two weeks later, if you really went into it, that dog will still smell of citronella and with the dog's nose, it will still be able to smell the citronella. So the punitive, the corrective uh, aspect of what happened will carry over into behaviors that you didn't necessarily want the dog to also find unpleasant. All right, you run the risk of that. So you need something that's gonna finish. So it comes in, it starts, it corrects the dog, it finishes. It's at the right time, it's at the right level, it has the right associations, and it's basically finishing. So it ends when the dog um, desists in what it was doing or does a more desirable behavior. Now I just wanna come on to, there's more aspects of that, but because I'm talking about more desirable behavior, I'm gonna come back to the other part of the thing that I uh, said at the start, which was that I give a command and the dog fails to do it. And so I correct the dog, or I wanna correct the dog. Most people, most people at that stage have got a dog that doesn't understand what it is that you're asking them to do. We may think that they do, we may be pretty damn certain that they do, but most of the time in the context in which the, the sort of like breach of the rules occurs, the dog doesn't understand. It hasn't been taught strongly enough that the behavior that you're acquiring, so if I'm teaching you heal, heal, so when you're alongside of me, and it doesn't have to be really tight, you know, we're not talking about competition stuff, I'm just talking about a dog that's walking alongside of me, that when you heal alongside of me and you break and I correct you, I need to know that you understand that with distractions around or whatever, you still understand, I've taught you, I, I've, I've put in the effort to take you to situations that you would find distracting and to teach you the heal in those uh, situations or to teach you to sit when people if, if you can't sit um when people come into the house so if i said you sit and if you don't sit down when people come into the house or when people are moving about or you know then you're out and about and something really distracting like a squirrel comes along or something like that and i said you sit and you break from it and i correct you well it's unfair, to be completely honest with you, even though it's something that I'm thinking, well, you bloody well should sit because I've told you to sit and you understand sit. Not in this context, I don't. Not in this situation, I don't. Because if I did, I'd do it. If it was in my interest to do it, I'd do it. But it's not. It's more in my interest not to do it and to do that thing instead, which fine. You know, when you're teaching a dog and you come on to the actual proofing aspects where you're saying, right, you're solid in this behavior, and now I'm, I've used negative components in order to teach it, but now I'm actually gonna correct you because you've been wrong, what, what you've done is wrong. And I know that you know that in this situation, this is what is required, but you've broken from it, then I'm gonna correct you. But most people skip all that and just jump to the bit where mm, it's there or thereabouts in terms of the heel, he pulls off here sometimes, I let him have a little wee over here sometimes, or sniff over there and bring him back along. Well, but now he's jumped up at you. And I say to him, no, get off. And I pull him down and I start correcting him for what the oh, bloody hell. What's a, you know, what, what's going on? I've not, heal, heal. And what you'll see with a lot of people with heel work, and this, <laughs> this is massively common, is they'll do this. Heal, heal, heal. Right, they'll pull on the lead. If you're going to pull on the lead, you pull on the lead at the same time as saying heal. Or because you're human and you tend to use in, in, in sort of like what you consider to be stressful situations, a lot of people might react before they think, they'll tug and then give the command, okay, which I've said before is the same as smacking somebody across the jaw and then saying punt, uh, duck. The dog's never gonna learn from it. But you see, you don't even think about it, which is why it's nice to have somebody stand out and look at you and say, do you realize what you've just done? You know, the poor bloody dog never had a chance in hell to learn there because you didn't, your command came after the consequence. But most people put a dog that doesn't understand what is required into a context that it isn't prepared for yet and then correct it. That's to be honest with you, that is, it, it's not right. You shouldn't be correcting dogs for something that they don't understand. If it's something that's dangerous, if it's something that the dog does a specific thing, and then we go back to the other one, you know, back to the second point, and we say your behavior carries a consequence. You know, you dive towards a car, you're correct, a correction occurs when you go towards a car. Now that can be lots of different ways. I know that I, I favor working with remote collars. I make no secret about that because they hit every criteria that I would require on a corrective sense, all right, this is just on a corrective sense, not on a teaching sense, but on a corrective sense, they teach, uh, they hit 
all of those criteria that I personally would, would require in that they're instant, the level can be um, adjusted so that it is exactly right, it finishes straight away, it has nothing whatsoever to do with me, it's consistent right across the board. Do you know what I mean? Anybody can do it provided that they understand what they're doing and they've received adequate um, tuition so that they're fully fluent in what they're doing. Anybody can do it. it for the dog, it's nothing that carries over. There's no, no sort of like residual effect afterwards in terms of pain. Uh, there is no pain that carries over. It's a startle. Um, but put that aside, even if you were to use sprays, a pop on a lead, a water pistol, a throw can, a I mean, anything, anything, sound aversion, taste of anything, not taste aversion really, because that generally tends to carry over and uh, induce negative consequences later on, but I digress. Um, but basically, it's the two aspects of correction are that I do a behaviour that isn't commanded, that isn't cued, that has nothing whatsoever to do with me, and the dog does that and it carries an immediate consequence, fine. Um, but it still needs to hit those criteria. And the other one is that I ask something of the dog, and the dog doesn't do it, so I then correct those dogs. That still needs to hit the same criteria, but I need to look at it and I need to seriously ask myself, does my dog understand what I'm asking of it? If you can sit down and say to yourself, I don't know that he does, I don't know that she does, not in this context, not in this setting, I don't know that they understand it, then you need to teach it. You need to teach it, and there's nothing wrong, you can still use pressure in order to teach it. You can still use negative reinforcement. You can still introduce something that the dog finds unpleasant. Again, I'm thinking remote collars, but it doesn't have to be remote collars. There are other aspects. The pressure of a lead, you know, on a dog that's straining over this way for them, them to then give to the pressure of that lead on my recall, you know, it employs the same sort of like methodology. It's exactly the same principles, but I can use to teach but I'm not necessarily correcting you. Once I know that you've got it, once I know that you can understand it, then I would bring in the corrective element unless it is something that threatens welfare of the dog, of some third party, it threatens property, it's something that happens in my absence that involves the dog and its environment, it's triggered by the environment and I cannot modify or alter that through the use of modifying the, uh, the actual environment itself. So. You know, example, I have a dog that is left in the kitchen and I go out, whether the curtains are open or closed or whether there's a radio on or whether there's whatever else, I have a dog that goes, oh, 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 day in, day out when I'm away. Well, I can't, you know, I can't command you something for that. I can't teach you something for that. I can't, I can try and manipulate the environment so that you don't feel the need to do it, but some dogs simply get a kick out of doing it. So there needs to be a correction that occurs as a result of the behavior. So that's the one where it just happens and it still needs to hit the criteria. And the other one is where I'm asking for a behavior and I'm correcting you for doing it wrong. That's the one that probably most people find themselves dealing with is that I'm telling you to do something and you're not doing it. Now I'm getting frustrated. I'm correcting you. It's not working, you know, because the correction isn't hitting those criteria and the one that most people seek help for. But I just wanted to get that off my chest <laughs> because I was reading something that somebody had written and this all came into my head. So I thought I'd put it down. It might be of benefit to somebody. Somebody might think, crikey, you know, this guy's just going off on one again. But hopefully it is a benefit. We'll see. Thank you very much.